Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. I know it's a beautiful, gorgeous Friday of a long weekend, so you can always uh, catch this again. So I'm going to move pretty quickly here because you can see we're going to talk about how to create a beautiful uh, morpho metallic butterfly, very luminous with the new Kotman Windsor and Newton um, metallic colors. So just to, to um, tell you a little bit about myself quickly is um, I'm part of the Fine Art Collective. It's a global network of professional artists and art educators and chemists and historians. There's quite a team of people, curators, and we're based in about 12 different countries. And it's a great educational program um, at TFAC. You can go there on Instagram. Here's the handles for Above Ground in Windsor Newton and my handle as well. And just to share material practice and expertise and artist colors and tools and techniques. So you can go to any of these sites to get a lot of great little demos and stuff. So the other thing is too, if you need some websites, you're not on Instagram, is you can go to the Fine Art Collective. Um, there's my website, Windsor Newton, and also Above Ground. So we're going to talk about the um, 12 colors today, or the eight, sorry, the eight metallic colors. So this is um, what I'm gonna be demonstrating. And we're gonna actually create a butterfly. So if you are following along or you watch the replay, the first thing I did to start is just, you know, I just didn't create this, is that you wanna get some really nice Windsor Newton uh, cold press watercolor. And the size that I'm working is seven inches by six inches. And you just draw that up first of all. So that's the first step. So I'm gonna step it out for you just so you understand. And the second step is to get that really nice clean dark line around the black gesso is you wanna get some painter's tape and you wanna actually tape it off. So that would be step two. So I'm gonna keep just working through the steps and then we'll get painting. Um, and if I have more time at the end, I'll show you how to apply the black gesso. Now this is black gesso. This is the Liquitex black gesso, but there is a Galleria Windsor & Newton and Ryan confirmed, um, I don't think Above Ground carries it, but the Liquitex black gesso, which is the sister company, works perfect as a ground. And you apply that one coat is all you need to get that really nice dark deep black color. So that's step three. And then step four is to actually draw it up. And what I used to draw it up was a, um, the charcoal, the Windsor & Newton white charcoal pencil. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe we could put the full screen on the artwork now. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Annie. So here you'll see the, um, let's see if I can get that in focus. Anyway, there's a, a white charcoal pencil. It's Windsor & Newton. And what I did was I actually, it's the best way to, to do it is to draw it up on the actual black gesso, the butterfly. Now, you might be thinking how to get the butterfly on there from you know, from a sketch or whatever. So what I did was I have, um, I, I looked at a lot of different references of morpho butterflies, which are very iridescent. And you can see like there's sunset ones and you can see the different iridescence in them. So do a little research and then inspired to do it on the black background was with um, Damien Hurst. And what I did was I, I drew up the butterfly and, and then from a photocopy of a butterfly I found online. And how I drew it up was I got some tracing paper. I just wanna explain this because this is part of the process. Is I, I drew it up on some tracing paper. And then what you can do is using that charcoal, white charcoal is just Put it on the back and it acts like a tracing and I don't I won't have time to show how to do this but if we have time at the end I will because I want to get going painting and then you can put it over top of your black gesso and then using a HB pencil just um, draw it out and then it will give you the transfer so that's super important because a lot of times 
people don't want to draw freehand. Um, so that's important, just how to get to this stage of the drawing. And then um, once that's transferred, if you do want to do freehand, you can use the charcoal pencil. Um, so I can always provide this uh, you know, to Annie if you did want a drawing of a butterfly. I have no problem to share that. So the Damien Hurst was um, a famous, uh, is still alive. He did this beautiful butterfly spin painting. So this kind of inspired me to think, to show all the metallic colors and then doing it on black. Okay, so we're gonna get right into the painting now. Um, any questions so far on the process? I'm really trying to move fairly quickly here. Okay, so the colors we're gonna to use today um, and I'll lay these out, is this is basically our palette here. The palette is the uh, full eight colors of the Cotman metallic watercolors. And you can see here, they range in value from um, a light value on the black with the iridescent white, silver, and then going to the iridescent black and the pewter color, and then the red, copper, bronze. So I'm gonna lay out the color and then we're gonna start filling in the butterfly and then at the end, to get that really beautiful blue on top is I'm going to use the uh, blue pro marker metallic color. And these are the six pro metallic colors. You can see how beautiful that green is as well. Um, I come up a little bit higher on that for you, but we're gonna use that blue and that's gonna tie in all the underpainting we're gonna do with the iridescences. Okay, so. If you have any questions, just, you know, please do ask. So what I'm going to do is I'm using um, a paper palette and Windsor Newton has the paper palette and I'll put it right beside the artwork here so you can see it. And I'm going to, I might come up just a little bit so you can see the colors. So I'm going to lay out all of the colors because I want to really just show you all the different colors um, and how they work. Um, let me just get this. Okay, so I'm gonna lay out, this is the iridescent white on the paper palette. And I probably put about mm, a good little dab of each on there. You may need more, but that's the iridescent white. This is the silver. This is the blue. The iridescent blue and I'm spacing them out so there's enough room to actually you know do the mix to do some mixture as well. Um, the yellow gold these are beautiful colors and then the uh, red copper and you're going to see when I start working how I'm just going to use them all and then it, it ties in at the end. And this is the bronze. Can you see that? And then the pewter. Now these are all permanent and light fast. It's a very high quality pigmented. I'll put it up here, the pewter. So you can see it on the screen and the iridescent black but we will be using a lot of the black from the paper as well. So those are the eight colors. Um, the brushes that I'm gonna be using are the professional watercolor synthetic sable brushes. These are fairly new. I'm gonna see if I can come up a bit closer so you can see them. And these are actually one strokes. They're um, a quarter of an inch. I'll put it on the white so you can actually see there. Um, and they have just a really nice, soft, synthetic sable, um, you know, brush fillet to them. So if you haven't tried these new ones, they're really beautiful. Um, also, there's the line of Cotman, Windsor Newton Cotman brushes. So I have a round one here. It's just for any finer detail. I tend to like the, the flat um, brushes. And I also have um, a bright, which is Liquitex bright, it's a two. It just has a bit of a harder nylon brush, which is nice as well. 
So you can choose your brushes. Oh, there's so many beautiful brushes to, do, to go with. Um, so what I start with, I'm just going to set up my, my other sample piece here. Just give me a second. Yeah. So what I start with is I take a little bit of water and I'm going to, oh, I wanted to also share with you because of the Morpho butterfly and that these can, the iridescent, the new Cotman watercolors can be actually um, used with the Windsor Newton professional line of watercolors as well. So I found this from the Jewel series. I'm going to go over here because you can see it better. Maybe come up a little bit. There we go. This is the Schmalt, the Schmalt color, the Dumans blue. And I thought it would be nice to mix with the iridescent blue, um, just to give a little bit of um, introduction to you how the iridescent colors can mix in. And I'll put that Schmalt blue right there how they can be used um, together. It just gives it a little bit more blue in there. So you can see here the schmalt blue, the color of it. And it's also good to have um, maybe a piece of paper or a rough um, sheet. This was actually all the metallic colors on white. You can see how much they really uh, if I turn them around, you can see they've got the iridescent, but they really, really work well on black. So um, I like to use the paper palette rather than you can use a dish as well. But when you're using so many colors, it's nice to have a bit more freedom on the actual palette paper. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start to just lay in the color and get the shape in there of the butterfly. And you can see how beautiful, can you see that iridescent already? And I've added just a little bit of the, sm the small color in there. Not sure if I'm saying that right. How do you pronounce that, Ryan? Smalt, Dumans Blue. And you can see here how beautiful that iridescent blue is against the black. And I'm just going to lay it in to just start to define that shape in there. And um, just use a little bit more water. So I'm going fairly wet on wet into the butterfly here. Um, so I'm just going to define those edges and that shape. And what by laying down just sort of a, a medium range value is then you have a range to start working with. And whether you fill in the whole area with blue is up to you. Because we're not doing this as a, you know, um, a full representational and has a bit of abstraction to it, but it still is to show just the beauty of those metallic colors. So this is the iridescent blue I'm using right now. And then I'll go up into this area here. You guys have any questions? Have you tried the iridescence? Let me know where you're from and what you like to paint, maybe. Um, so I can add a little bit of that small blue in there. You can see it just really. Um, just gives a little bit of extra punch to the blue. So you can see here, once you actually get that blue in there, it, you know, it just makes that butterfly come right alive. Um, don't worry about the um, white lines because once this is completely dry, you can, Once this is completely dry, you can just erase those lines um, with a Winsor Newton eraser. And um, at the end, when this is dry, I can show you how to do that because it dries pretty quick, especially in this temperature. So are you guys liking this iridescent blue? Isn't it gorgeous? It's so beautiful. So you can see just getting the the butterfly drawn 
is half of the preparation in getting the artwork ready. And I'm just going into it lightly because I want to add in some of the other colors as well. Actually, I'm going to try and use them all and then we'll tie it in with the pearl marker. So you can see here in the belly of the butterfly, which is usually black, we'll just keep it, we'll just actually keep it um, the gesso. Okay, so that's the blue laid in and we can always come back if we feel we want more blue in certain areas. So the next color is just to give it a little highlight somewhere and we'll use, this is the um, iridescent white and this is a great color to create highlights. So we want to maybe create that highlight. Um, just gonna see if I've got that reference here to show you, um, I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, just to show you how the iridescent has these really nice highlights to it. Let me get that one, that one picture there. I just, so you can see here that if you are working from um, like a photocopy, you can just see how it can create those sort of uh, iridescent values, which is what we're, we're actually working on. So um, yeah, so here we've got the iridescent white and you can start to work some of those colors in here, much like the Damien Hurst is we're going to just start to just highlight some of those areas. And that can give that, that shape around there. Also the antennas of the, the butterfly you could go in and do with the iridescent white as well. Maybe the highlights are on the top of the actual butterfly itself here. Does anyone have any questions? Any or is everyone just watching away here? Looks like a quiet crowd. <laughs> no, it's so beautiful outside. I am. Um... So there you How go. Would... Hmm? How would the 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 Cotman iridescent colors compare to say the Derwent metallic colors? The Derwent metallic colors. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, you know, I have not used the Derwent metallic colors, so that would be hard for me to to answer that. But okay. you could ask, you could maybe ask Annie if she's done some experimentation or or. Ryan's on the call there. I don't know if he's had a chance to have any feedback from other people being in sales and going to art shows and stuff, right? So that's the iridescent white. And then we're going to move into the silver. So that's number three color. So I don't have a question for the Derwent one. I uh, apologize, but there's a really good question about is using the pen as effective as the liquid paints? The pens, uh, the metallic pens? Uh, yes. Okay, so metallic pens, when we get to the um, pro marker metallics, they are dual tip. And they do, with the dual tip, is that you've got one tip, I'm gonna do it against the white, you've got one tip that will give you fine detail. And the other side of the marker gives you for more blocking in color. The nice thing about these pro marker metallics is that they're not alcohol based. They're actually pigment based and they're water, they, they mix with water. You'll see when I start blending in that top blue color. Um, so how do they, what's better? I think if you're laying in tone, mass tone, you wanna use a brush and if you're doing more detail work, then you would use a marker to do the fine, the fine work. So 
Does that answer the question? It wasn't really the question, but really good information to know. Um, they were more inquiring about the difference between the liquid paints, metallic paints that you're using right now versus the half pan sets, for example. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I haven't used the half pans. Um, these are so new that I haven't even had a chance to use the half pans, but the half pans are basically um, paint that you just reactivate with water. Um, I'm gonna see if I've got a half pan set here. Um, this is, I think I've got one here. It's uh, Windsor Newton, but it's the, um, actually this one, what I did was I took out all the colors from this Windsor Newton set and I put in the cadmium free colors and the ju five jewel colors here. So we could actually use, this is that schmalt blue that I've been using. So what you do is that this is highly pigmented, um, um, you know, watercolor. So it's just activate it with the brush. And um, I can actually show you that how much you, you can get a lot out of it. Um, I don't have the metallic pans here, but it will be the same thing. Um, you know, they're both give you quite a bit of pigment. You, this is activated by water and these tubes are obviously, you know, fresh paint from a tube, but you can, yeah, you get about the same amount of pigment. Um, a lot of people like them in the half pans when they're traveling and they're doing plein air and stuff like that. It's a good question because you almost have to play around with it. So now I'm using the silver and you can see here, I'm creating this really beautiful foundation underneath the butterfly for when we go on top. So you can see the silver is very similar to the, um, to the white. If you really look at the, the chart here again, you'll see that these three colors, the iridescent white, the silver and the iridescent blue they've got a value, a very light shimmering value. So as we get more into the mid range and then the darker range, we're working light to dark, you could work dark to light, then um, we're working more with the color value. So that's the way I can show you the full way of, you know, creating something, creating this really nice butterfly. Um, with all of those metallic colors. I could have just used one or two of the colors, but I just thought it would be really fun to do something that would be a little bit more adventurous and, and luminous. And, and what happens with these, because they, they have sort of a mica-based um, pigment to them, the reflective quality will the transparency and also the underpainting of it will reflect through. Um, so that's the silver you can see it's very close to the blue and the white and then we'll just keep building it up. And, and it's nice just to give it that shimmer quality on different areas because the butterfly, if you actually look at the butterfly, it, it has the morpho butterflies especially, they have, on all butterflies, they have sort of these lines that sort of differentiate, but as they move, that, that coloring changes. Okay, so the next color, we're gonna start going into the mid-range colors, which are the golds, the yellow gold. And if the, your paints start to dry up a little bit, don't worry, you can just reactivate them but we're going to go into the golds. And now I'm gonna work more on top. It dries pretty quick. So I'm just working the, the golds on top. So I'm, I'm starting to layer this trans, these, you know, these iridescent colors, these metallic colors, but not cover it up completely, just enough so it has a beautiful transparency. So you're still seeing the silver and the white and the blue and that reflect the reflect reflective quality underneath it. So it's it's giving it 
you know, maybe some emphasis on a certain area of it a little bit more as we start to build it up. So yeah, the metallics are really, really something that you can play around with um, in terms of things that are metallic or if you wanna create metallic flowers, you know, there's so many beautiful things in nature that are metallic. There's, you know, bugs, there's dragonflies, there's, you know, all these wonderful, you know, uh, creatures and flowers as well as, um, you know, even if you go into planetary or stones, you know, like gems and things like that, you know, there's, this metallic quality is, is pretty special. So you can see here that I'm layering this up. Now this is the yellow gold. And then I'm going to be using, any more questions? I know it's a beautiful day. I really appreciate you guys being here. So you can see how nice the, um, let me see if I can get a bit closer. You can start to see how it's starting to just have dimension because we're, we're using the full range of tints, tones, and shades with the metallic colors. And these are more, we went, did a lot with the tints and we may come back to the tints and now we're working it in tonally. And we're just keeping that, um, we're just keeping the middle section of that butterfly black because we may have to define it a little bit here. And we can come in with the metallic um, pro marker. We can come in with the silver. You can see I did that in the end. So the paper I'm using is a Winsor & Newton uh, cold press. It's 140 pounds. Um, you can use a hot press, which has, you won't see all, you can see a little bit of surface so the cold press has a, a tooth to it. So the next color I'm going to use, so now we're on to our fifth color here, is this beautiful, um, it's, it's a bronze color and now we're going to get more into the mid-tone here and you may not want to um, cover the whole thing with it but just maybe a certain area with the bronze. And you can see here that um, if I take a certain area of the butterfly. And so really what I'm doing here is I'm creating like an underpainting. So when we just feather the pro marker on top, you'll be able to just to see some of these beautiful colors shimmer through on the butterfly. How am I doing for time? Okay, we've got half an hour here. Let's keep moving along. Anyway, I think we've got some good timing here. So we're not trying to cover up all the stuff underneath. We're just trying to allow it to, um, you can see that the iridescent um, is so shiny that when it's wet, but I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so you can see how the colors are working on there and we're layering those colors. So this is the uh, bronze that we're working with. So I'll go back to this reference. This is our palette. So we've done these four colors and we're into the bronze and then we'll finish up with these and then we'll do the pro marker. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay that in here. Have you guys seen many butterflies this year? Monarchs? Okay, I want to be mindful not to cover up some of the beautiful yellow golds that we did and yet emphasize certain areas. So the nice thing about watercolors, if you are watercolors, is the layering and the transparency and the glazing techniques. 
And you can definitely do some beautiful glazing with the iridescence as well. Also mixing them with other colors. So the next color I'm gonna use, we're building up the, the wings here a little bit more, is I'm gonna be using this really beautiful red copper. And then we'll go into defining the shape a little bit more with the blacks, the pewter and the iridescent black. So this here, you can see me, sorry, I'll mix up here. This one here is the um, rose gold and it's, it's a really, it's actually quite, this red copper, sorry. There is a rose gold metallic and and you can see here, just just sort of um, feathering it a little bit. So when we put that blue on, that contrast will really, really be nice. So we're kind of following some of the lines that you would see in the butterfly. So this you could actually do more linear rather than tonally um, using the edge of that uh, stroke. That's the synthetic stroke. And I haven't changed brushes at all. You can see I'm doing a lot of this with one, one brush. So if I look at, you can see the line quality here. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. I'm going to put the reference up here just to show the lines. And you can just actually put those lines in, which is, which they basically um, go in the direction of the butterfly. And if you want to feather them out a little bit, I've got my, bright, my watercolor here, brush here, is that you can actually just can go into it and soften the lines if you if you find the lines are too strong. But you have to be careful. You can see it's picking up some of the underneath there. So um, if you put too much water in there, um, you're going to start to lift up. So I'm just going to. If you're working wet on wet, um, what you might want to do is have a hair dryer, um, you know, because of the time here. Um, you know, I'm trying to work a little bit more dry brush than, um, you know, than wet and wet because then it, it, there would be a lot more to, a uh, lot more to actually deal with in terms of drying, drying time and stuff like that. So once you have all the colors we've used, um, like all we've used one, two, three, four, five, six colors, and now we're going to go into the darker colors, and then I'm going to go in with the pro marker, and and finish it off. So it's pretty quick. Um, you can see here because I did a lot of wet on wet. Some of the black came through here, so I might even go in there, and. Um, go back into it with a little bit of the blue on top. At this point, you, you don't really need to worry too much about um, the underpainting. It's, it's really about just creating that sort of layering of transparency with the watercolors, I find. And then maybe going back in with a little bit more of that bronze color. And just feathering it a little bit. And then with the um, red copper. So do you guys have a favorite color yet of the of iridescence? Has anyone tried any of the iridescent colors? There's a dot card. Um, if you didn't know, maybe Annie mentioned it to you. There will be, she can send you. Um, if you haven't signed up for it yet, there's a nice little dot card here showing all the different colors. Did most people sign up for the dot card, Annie? Yes, most people who have put their address, they are either in the mail or I will send it on Monday. 
Okay, fantastic. Great. Okay. So it looks like we have most of the, um, the color laid down. I'm just going to let this dry a little bit up here. And then I'm going to use the dark pewter and the um, iridescent black to just define the shape a little bit. And then we'll go in with the pro marker and then we'll, we'll be finished. And, and then I can show you how, you know, the tape, we can take this tape off um, to, you know, complete the, the painting. So the next color is the pewter color. See if I can put that into frame here for you. Never enough space when you're working. <laughs> okay, so there's the pewter color and it's a, um, I'll show you in the reference here. So the pewter color is a sort of really, you can see how it shimmers in different ways, but it's sort of very close in value to the black, the iridescent black. And we're going to use this to define the, the edge of the butterfly a little bit more. And we'll do it with the black as well, just because the, mm -hmm. yeah. don't worry about any of that white that you see because that will and even in the butterfly, we can start to add a little bit of that pewter, just tonal value in there. Because um, that white will totally erase out if you're using a charcoal pencil. Okay, so the pewter's pretty subtle in value, but it just gives it a little bit more um, edge to define the edge of those, both all of the wings. And then we'll get into the black. And then maybe just a little bit in, in here, just to give it a little depth. So what happens by layering the different values, you create depth in that, in that wing or in that that watercolor by doing all that work. So, so where where are you guys from? Are you all from Toronto, or what kind of art do you like to create? Does anyone know? Okay, so that's the pewter. Um, we're getting quite a bit of highlight from here that they, what, what's happening, maybe if I turn this light off, let me just see if we can, with the iridescence, you know, it's all depends on the light, right? So, make any difference. Anyway, once I get this done, then we'll, okay, so the last one is the iridescent black and then we'll get into using the um, pro markers the pro marker and do the grand finale and finish it off here so i'm using the iridescent black which is this mixture right here and you can see this was the pewter so the black has a shimmer to it and here is the iridescent black with that full the full range and i'm going to use the black to outline even deeper the butterfly here. And, the, um, and you can see it's not as black as the gesso. It just gives a little bit of definition of the wing area. And I'm using the edge of the brush. So if you're follow along, um, you know, with the replay, you just, you want to, you can move your brush around to get the, and then if you want, you can feather it a little bit to get some of that color in there. 
some of that iridescent uh, black in there. Okay, usually the tips quite a bit, and then we'll just go all that along. And you can see it's not a black black. When you really look at that black black gesso, it's it's so much deeper than that. And what's interesting is that the on the on the screen this looks blue and this looks black, but it's actually the black I'm using. So it's just the way the light is reflecting um, on here. And then we can feather that a little bit. So now we're ready to, um, let's see here to, we can just do a little bit here. On the bottom here of the wing. Do you guys have any questions for me? Someone wants to get outside, I think. Yeah, it looks great. It's starting to look really great. Okay, so we'll just leave that alone. So that's pretty much all the metallic colors. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the, um, these are the pro markers, the different colors of pro markers, but we're really gonna use the blue one today. And as I mentioned, they're um, twin tipped. They're great for highlights, which is what we're gonna be doing on the butterfly today. And they blend really well with the water. Um, I'm gonna show you that. Um, and it, they're very high quality metallic, um, you know, water-based pigment ink. So it's acid free as opposed to some of the other pro markers are alcohol based and the colors are very, very strong. So I'm going to actually use the thicker tip because I want to brush in that beautiful blue. If you look at the original one I did here, you can see here, all that blue on top is that pro marker blue. So we're going to do that for the last 10 minutes here. Oops, I think I just took that out. Okay. So now what we're going to do to this butterfly is some of it's still a little wet here and there. So I'm just going to start with where it's not so wet. And, and then we're going to use some, I'm actually going to go get some clean water. I've got some here because I've been using all the metallics and I'm going to feather it in with the um, with the brush with the with the same brush I've been using so we'll start on the bottom leaves and you can see here look how strong that blue is it's really that morpho blue color and I'm going to start to feather this color in um, just enough because these are actually you can use with water. And I'm going to just start to feather in that beautiful blue color. And this will be how I'm going to, this is how I did the other one. And you can see how much I put on there and how much it really, um, you know, goes a long way. And I'm gonna leave some of the color underneath because that's the beauty of it. So these pro markers, if you don't use them with water, this is the color I'm actually using. This is what they look like. This is the thick end and that's the fine tip. But the blue, when you mix it with water, you can get quite a bit of beautiful color in there. And I'll put a little bit more on the bottom here. Um, let me just go in here. And you can see here, if I just go in a little bit, I don't need a lot of the marker. You wanna store these markers flat too. That's one of the tips that's really important because of the way the pigment is. And you can see here, I'm going in with this water and I'm starting to just feather in that color enough so there's enough transparency. To see through all those beautiful iridescent colors that we were using to get that one, one um, wing done. So we're going to do this with all the wings. 
So the next wing, um, and hopefully we'll wrap this up soon for any other questions. So now I'm going to go into the, the other wing here. So you can see how really beautiful this, these metallic uh, markers, pro markers work so nice with the iridescent, the new iridescent colors. So I'm going to leave a little bit of that highlight in there and come around here with this color. You can see I'm, I'm creating kind of this line, this kind of shape, but then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to feather. I'm going to feather that beautiful blue color in. And I don't need too much of it because it really, it does go a long way. And I probably should have the tip on while I'm doing that so it doesn't dry out. Um, I'm not sure when the pro markers came out, but um, if Ryan's still on the call, he could let us know. So I'm coloring in. the blue, picked up a little bit of the black there, but we can always go back and touch that up. Oh, can you guys still hear me? Okay. Yeah. So what I can do is, some of the blue there. You guys have any questions about these markers or okay two more wings to go and I think we'll be wrapping up any questions Annie or uh yes about the markers do you know if we can rehydrate them um I don't think so. I think once the markers are dry, it's not like the Liquitex markers where you can change the nibs in these. These ones, you can't change the nib really. Um, they're pretty much, um, you know, once they're dried up, I don't think these are removable and replaceable like the other, like the Liquitex ones. It's a good question because, you know, it's easy for things to dry up. So, um, okay, so two wings down. So you really wanna lightly feather that and to, to get that, that look. So now we're gonna do the top one. These are pretty dry on top now. And if you find the markers are, you know, if they get some black on them or whatever, you can just, um, if the nib gets a little dirty, you just, it's sort of like an eraser, you just erase it out, right? Okay, now we're gonna go up to the, the top one here. Do you guys find this helpful or do you like the, do you like the idea of creating some butterflies or flowers with metallics? What would you create with metallics? I think you really picked a good subject for using iridescent and metallic paints. Yeah. And it's so well, cool yeah. you can use markers and paints at the same time, or like not at the same time, but together. Yeah, I really wanted to show that today and just how, you know, you could use all the iridescent colors. It was a bit of, a, you know, I wasn't quite sure if that idea was gonna work and whatever, but you know, I, I played around with it and I thought, oh, this is great. And you can see even just leaving it like that, it's kind of cool. But just watch how much water you're using because you can see it starts to pick up underneath and if it's not completely dry. So um, yeah, you can always go back in with some color on top there. Because this is a blue morpho butterfly that we're doing and uh, yeah, you know, if you really look at the way the 
the lines are in the blue butterfly. Um, you know, we're not doing a, a representational here. We're doing just a nice, a nice sort of stylized, but, but still representational to a little bit. And then just how you can use it with water. And you really, I really am using a very light pressure because I don't want to disturb the, the watercolor underneath too much, the iridescent colors underneath too much. But you can see how nice these work with water and how well they blend with water and how nice they work as a highlight on top here. Um, let me just go in here a little bit more. Since you're not looking at the chat, I just wanted to tell you about Beth com comments. She said yeah. it's really interesting and she looks forward to trying it out. Oh, fantastic. Great. Yeah, I know it's, there's lots to do, but you can see how beautiful it's becoming into this really nice morphal butterfly. And of course, you know, I'm rushing it a little bit. I got, you know, maybe five minutes left here. So I'm, uh, you know, doing kind of a quick, but, you know, I'm sure you could do this in an hour, an hour and a half, no problem. And, you know, I've, I've been chatting a lot too, just so you know, I'm not completely quiet. So now I'm going to go into the other wing before we finish up here. And yeah, I mean, if you think what you can create in an hour with these beautiful metallic colors, and you know what, it, it's not, there's no right or wrong really, it's just, it's just trying it out, playing around, that's all I did, that's how I came up with the idea of the blue morpho. And then, you know, it took me a few days just to figure out how to make it something really beautiful you know, to show you guys in an hour and, and to show you the potential of, you know, these really nice, well, these markers as well as the, um, you know, unfortunately I'm not using all of these beautiful color. I mean, I would love to use that green somewhere, you know, maybe in the fall using those red golds, you know, but, um, but right now it's definitely better. And even just doing line work with the, um, you know, with this Pro Marker Metallic is nice. You know, I'm going to actually blend it a little bit, but, but, you know, if you go in the direction of the sort of lines of the butterfly, then it gives some nice movement um, as well. And then you could actually even take that and do a little bit of a line here as well. So I'm just going to blend that and then I'll show you how I release the tape. And I'll take any more questions before we wrap up. And I hope you guys enjoyed this today and enjoy thinking about butterflies on the weekend, on this beautiful long weekend we're going to have. So I've got a little bit too much water in there. I tend to just like to work it a little bit now. I'm picking up a little bit there. I have to be careful when, because I'm just like that to be completely blue. Dennis has a great suggestion for using these metallic colors. Hummingbirds would be great. Oh too. yeah, hummingbirds would be great. I did think of, yeah, and dragonflies, you know, I mean, absolutely. Hummingbirds would be great. They have such beautiful iridescent colors. Yeah, I think there's just so, you know, even some of the beautiful, flowers, I have these beautiful and patient flowers and, you know, they, um, you know, they really have those strong reds and stuff, but it, you know, I couldn't, there's not really a, I have to do some color mixing um, with some other colors because there wasn't any red in the metallics. So anyway, I'm almost finished here. I'm, I'm being very mindful of the time. And um, I'm not sure what's going on here, but it's picking up a little bit. Maybe it's starting to dry a little bit here. So I'm chatting too much. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit more blue in there. Just to 
But you can see how just having those iridescents, layering them in underneath, you know, even if we do cover up, how it just illuminates out, right? And then how nicely it blends in. Now what you can do is if you want, you can um, go with the silver marker. I did this on the original piece. Um, and then I'll, I'll just wrap up here is I took the um, pro marker, silver marker, and I just did some implied line just around the wing area here, just around here, just to give a little bit of movement around here. Um, just, you can do that if you want. It just gives it a little bit of interest, a little bit of outline. I know some times people outline with the black, but this, because this is black, we're just doing a little bit with the white. Um, giving a little definition. You can even go in here a little bit if you wanted to create a little bit of highlight in there. Um, I think I might have did a little bit on here too. Um, so you can play around with that idea as well. Just you don't want to do a full line, just a bit of a, an implied line gives it a little bit of movement in there. Um, and then once this is completely dry, you can erase those white lines here. So we could do just a little bit here. I'm gonna try and wrap this up because I know the timing is we're getting close to the time. Mindful of the time and stuff. Maybe just a little bit here. Yeah, and a little bit on the way. So there you have it, a beautiful morpho butterfly. I'll just do a little bit here. Thing is you never know when to stop but when you haven't got any more time that's when you kind of stop so um there you go so i'm going to just show you how to pull the tape um if you've got any questions let me know so once the butterfly is done let it completely dry and then you can um you'll see there's a little bit of white line where i did the tracing then you can rub that out so what you want to do is release the tape. You want to pull it. Now, the tape, this is painter's tape, and you might, yeah, pull it towards you here. And you'll get that really nice, clean line. There might be a little bit there, but I can peel that off as well. So Annie, did, did you want, um, I know I don't want to go over the time here. Did you want to say anything else in closing here or? Or Ryan or? Um, I feel like a... <laughs> um, is uh, Ryan here? Did you guys find this helpful? Did you enjoy this? I hope so. Here we go. I'm peeling this off. There might be a little bit of the tape, but it's easy to come off. But look at, just look how beautiful it looks, right? Are you guys excited? In one hour, right? I was talking a lot. So, sorry, I'm trying to pull the tape off. I'm, and I'm working under a camera here, but, but it does really come off. So um, I just got a little bit up here to pick off here. There we go. And a little bit over here. So you can pick all this tape off, no problem. If you can move it so we can see the Thanks, Ryan. when you're done. Thank you. I hope this was super helpful. I hope you guys get the metallics and you try them out. Try out the pro markers. They're so beautiful. And, you know, look at just how beautiful these pro markers are. And you can blend them with water. And here's the full range again. And, and try them out. You know, they were great on the black. Um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy doing a butterfly. I almost think this butterfly looks better than my original one, which is this one here. But now I've got two. <laughs> it's kind of fun. And, and just look how beautiful it is on the black. I'll just put this up a little bit. Just in closing, this is from a PDF that I received from my art direct from my program director. If you have, want to do more abstract things, not, you know, details. 
and then this is the the black blue and white and then also you know try them on top of non-metallic colors or mixed with other non-metallic colors there's so many possibilities to try um but this was just to show mm -hmm. i use every single color and um and then that pro marker on top so there's the final piece and thank you so much i'll go back to the main one i guess um I think there's a recording. I'm just going to peel off the little loose end here. Anyway, look how nice and clean it is. And um, I hope the step by step is clear to you how to do it. I know if we had more time, I could show you how to use the gesso, but it's pretty easy. The black gesso, you just apply it like any gesso on there. Okay, so we can go back to any more questions? No? Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> so thank you for coming out today. I hope you have a beautiful weekend and enjoy seeing some butterflies and dragonflies and look at iridescent colors in a different way and be inspired to paint them and whether it's butterflies or Hummingbirds are great. I would love to do a hummingbird now, <laughs> whoever made that suggestion. So thanks, Ryan, and thanks Above Ground for sponsoring this today. Um, Windsor Newton, I want to thank as well, and, uh, and the support of my program director, Jimmy Leslie, and Ryan for really helping me out on this, and Above Ground for really all the work behind the scenes to get this organized at the last minute. So have a great end to the watercolor month and enter the contest. You never know, you might win. Um, and I hope you can see how easy it is to make a beautiful butterfly painting. And then, so thanks again.